Okay, welcome back everyone. Just wanted to give a, a quick update video. I know it's been a while uh, since I put one out. Uh, reason there's really been nothing to update. But there are three uh, things that I want to go over with you real quick. I guess, well, first off, the tank's doing good. No issues with it. Uh, however, I did have a small, uh, maybe quarter size spot of what looked to be cyano you know, growing between those two rocks over there on the right. Uh, but I added my GFO reactor uh, as well. I adjusted the one of the power heads to put some more flow through that area, and that has since uh, disappeared. So, other than that, really, really no no issues. Uh, that's probably the, the first thing I want to show you is the addition to the display tank, and that is a coal yellow eye tang. Picked him up about probably a, maybe a month ago, a little over a month. He's been in the quarantine. I just moved him over to the display tank. Uh, great fish, really love him. Definitely the most active swimmer in the tank. Uh, he's always picking on the rocks, uh, getting the, uh, the algae off, uh, what algae there is, but really, really nice fish. Really, really happy with him. Uh, he's peaceful, doesn't bother my pajama cardinals or my other two clowns, but a really, you know, really nice, nice tang. Really glad I, um, glad I picked him up, if I can keep up with him. Uh, he hid the first, probably the first night in the tank, but since then he's come out and has definitely made himself at home. Uh, I'll add a seaweed clip, put it on the back, he goes after that, so great fish. I definitely recommend him, and so far he's uh, nice and healthy and, and very active. Alright, that's the first update. Now. After I moved him to the display tank, I noticed that my local fish store was having a sale on the next fish that I wanted, which is a uh, fox face rabbit fish. So right now he's in the quarantine, so let me take you over there and uh, where are my clouds at? They're around here somewhere. Oh, there they are. Uh, show you my other addition that's going to be moving over in about a month or so. Be back in a second. Okay, so here is the next fish that will be headed to the display in about a month or so. It's a fox face rabbit fish. I really, you know, really like this fish. Uh, I love the color on him, the contrast uh, with the face and the, and the body. Uh, one thing about the fox face, and for those who don't have one, whenever they are uh, startled, I guess is the word I want to use, they, they turn colors on you and it's it's almost instantaneous and the best way to describe the color is uh, think of a, a rotten banana peel that's exactly you know what he'll look like and I don't want to startle him intentionally to show you but um, those spines will come up uh, which I think he's displaying now and he will he'll change colors on you and if you don't realize that you'll think you know, it'll freak you out but when I was in this pet store, local fish store, who was having a sale on him, good timing, uh, he explained to me, you know, that uh, that that nature of them, and um, it's, you know, it's real real interesting to see. I think he's he's turning, he's fading out just a little bit now. Let me get you a closer look. So again, he's been in the quarantine for about mm, maybe three days now. Uh, he's active. Uh, he's eating. Uh, he's eating flakes. Um, I started off with a, a bit of mice's shrimp, which is what they were giving him in the in the fish store. But he's he's adjusting really well. Uh, he's definitely not hiding as much and changing colors on me. When I when I walk in this area, he'd immediately uh, you know flip the switch on me. But now he's, he's a, a lot more active and uh, he's, he's settling in well. So in about 30 days or so, I will move him over to the display tank. Uh, and you know, so he'll join the rest of the crew. But uh, that's, that's the, the next fish. After this one, I don't know what I'll get. And right now I'm sitting at, let's see, two, four, five. Uh, this will be my sixth fish. Um, and hopefully I'll have the lights all start adding some coral, so we'll see. But anyway, there's my fact fox face. And um, let me take you over to the sump area and show you the, the next update. Be back in a second. 
Okay, so for those of you who have been following my videos, uh, I've said that the next uh, purchases would be the controller uh, and the, uh, the LED light, not necessarily in that order, but I went ahead and broke down and I bought the controller. You know, I did a lot of research and I decided to go with the Neptune's Apex uh, just because you know, I, I really like the, you know, the, obviously the functionality, but the, the programmability of it, uh, the out-of-box networking and uh, you know so far I re really like like this controller um, another thing I've read is that they're you know they have excellent support and that, that really makes a difference for, you know to me because you know what separates uh, you know the, the great you know from the just the good is the you know the level of support and the responsiveness in case you run into problems or, or have issues so yeah I decided to go with the apex uh, so far you know I love it uh, and probably within Know, maybe 10 minutes of plugging it in again that's after everything is mounted and wired up you know I had to, had it you know networked in um, I'm able to you know, get to it from you know any computer with net network excuse me with internet access I have an app on my my phone that I can control it now again 10 minutes was because you know I had done some pre-planning uh, and again I'm you know fairly comfortable with, with networking so but don't if you don't know anything about, say, you know, forwarding a port on a router or, um, you know, what a domain name service is, then you know you 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 probably should get some help because it it can be a bit a bit challenging. But it's trust me, it's nothing you know you can't do and overcome. It's just you have to do your research and you know do some some reading. And there are tons of people who have set this thing up that that can that can help you. You know, myself included. So I, I mounted the, the display on the wall outside of the tank. So let me take you around here. So there's the tank, there's the controller, uh, and there's the door that leads to the, you know, to the back of the tank. So let me let me just take you around there and show you how I have everything wired up. Okay, so just to give you some perspective here, because this, again, this is a small area. There's the tank, obviously. Uh, and there's a board that early on I put up with the you know full intent of mounting the controller to and so let's take a look uh, on the left side here there's my uh, my energy bar 8 with all of the uh, the outlets uh, controllable outlets there is the main I guess you call it controller and plugged into there if I can get down here you know I've got that uh, that's the display this is the aqua bus that connects to the um, the NG bar 8 uh, there is my network cable and I have that network cable run over the ceiling in my basement over to my crawl space and it's hooked into a patch panel and from there I have jumpers from that patch panel over to the to the router so it's it's real neat and, you know, if you might see my setups and you know know me I just, it's, it's got to be you know, it's got to be neat and clean uh, right here is the temperature probe here is the uh, breakout box connection. And I'll talk about that in a second. And a pH controller, and then there's an open uh, port for another pH or or a P uh, controller. Now, the breakout box. Um, what I decided to do instead of getting a separate auto top off unit, I wanted to control the auto top off through the apex. So the breakout box gives you six switches, and with those six switches, you can hook up uh, things like a flow switch. So I picked up two flow switches, two, I think these are digital aquatics flow switches, and um, to control my auto top off. The one on the right, if we get around these holes here, is the primary, and the one on the left is the, the, the backup. And the one on the left is fully, fully submerged, so in case that one gets stuck in the open position, uh, the water level will drop further and uh, the backup will kick in. That will keep my return pump, which is right there, from you know, sucking air and, and burning out, as well as my reactor pump for my GFO. Now, I could have mounted both of the floats uh, on the same bracket, uh, the Digital Aquatics you know, float bracket allows you to do that. But I, I chose to go with two because I wanted to, you know, with the flexibility, be able to move it in a different location or 
um, maybe you know putting it deeper in the water so it's not not fixed. Now, one thing you may notice here is that I put some tubing over the wire, some airline tubing, and the reason for that is since that wire is going to be partially submerged all the time. Uh, I think it's just a matter of time before that salt water starts to degrade that insulation and then I'm going to run into problems. So what I did was I stuck it through some tubing, uh, packed the bottom with some, some silicone, and more importantly I packed the top of it with silicone to create an air pocket so that you know it's an air pocket inside there so no water is going to creep up inside that tubing. So again just some you know, just some protection to keep uh, to keep that salt water from you know, eating away at that insulation you know, for for the uh, for the float. Uh, let's see what else. On the back there is my pH probe. Um, me loving to you know, DIY it. I made my own probe, especially not the probes, but probe holder. Especially after I saw that it's like 20, 25 bucks for a for a decent probe holder. Uh, here is the uh, temperature probe, and since I made my own, of course, I separated them, which allows me to you know, put them on opposite sides of the tank. One thing that Neptune Systems recommends is to, I think, keep them at least six inches apart to keep, um, you know, keep uh, eliminate the chance of any interference. So, uh, quick and easy. I had some spare so, um, acrylic, cut it, and it slips right over the side works perfectly. Let's see, what else? Uh, oh, that'll top off. Let me go back to that for a second. Uh, there is the pump. It pumps out of that reservoir right there, comes up, and I've got this little holder right there, and just dumps into the tank. So, works, works fine. Uh, again, the programmability of that with the controller, you know, like it allows me to send myself an email in case my, say, my backup float, um, that switch closes for that. Uh, the Apex is, is just fantastic for that. Uh, another thing in the sump, I added some more Kato uh, when I ordered some more snails. If you remember before, I couldn't get it to grow. It just pretty much disintegrated. This one's doing a little bit better. They, the reason for the other Kato not growing. Someone said it's just due to a lack of nutrients. You know, I just didn't have the nutrients to support it, which I guess is a good thing. Uh, but this one, it's bleaching out on me a little bit. It's turning white, but it's it's not disintegrating. Definitely not as quick as the other one did. That light is. You see that? But uh, we'll see. It's been in there for about maybe three weeks now. Maybe a little bit longer. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, other than that, go Bears. Uh, the Apex is up and running. Uh, still playing around with the, you know, the programming of the outlets. Uh, we'll see, you know, uh, my next update. You know, some of the changes I make. Just you know, the flexibility of it is great. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, comments, uh, please feel free to leave them. And please feel free to subscribe. Talk to you later.